lighting people, have you ever wondered how buildings will be wired for lighting 20 years, 50 years, 100 years from now? And if so, do you think it'll be the same way we've been doing it for the last 20, 50, or 100 years? Power over Ethernet, or PoE, is an emerging technology that has found its way into more and more lighting applications with the innovations and expansion of use of lighting controllers and lower power consuming LED light fixtures, PoE has become a technology that is getting considered and utilized more and more in lighting applications. So we thought it'd be a good idea to catch up with the president of the PoE consortium, Kim Johnson, to ask her more about this emerging technology and how it's expected to grow in the years and decades to come. Kim, hello, and thank you for joining us today for five big questions. Hi, thank you, Al. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Well, we're glad you're here. And um, Power Over Ethernet is something that we hear so much more about in lighting circles these days. It had kind of a, a fast start and then it kind of disappeared from a lot of people's consciousness, but it feels like it's coming back, which is hopefully a good thing and wanted to learn more about it. First of all, right now, as you look at the market and you see where applications are right now, are there any geographical areas or maybe vertical markets that's using POE, say more than others right now? There are, and I, I think that what your perception is of POE making a splash, backtracking, coming back out is accurate, but I would actually say POE never went away. It just got quiet. And, you know, I am a marketer by trade, and I would argue that that was the missing component for a while. But during that time, when maybe you hadn't heard of it as much, PUE companies, PUE based companies started to develop, started to pop up, started to do proof of concepts, which started to turn into larger projects, which is starting to turn into more market noise, which is what we're starting to see today. So perhaps it's no surprise, major market, you know, major metro areas are leading the market. There's a lot more office space that is um, in the class A category, which is typically where you see people considering what's next, what's new, how can I retrofit or build this out in a way to last a long time. These are often companies willing to make a bit of an investment. And um, that is great, but also there's a flip side in that it can suggest that PUE is always the premium option. And I would say there's really a range, just like you can get a range with traditional lighting fixtures and controls today, you can get a big range of applications and advanced applications with PUE technology and use cases all the way down to really the most basic, simple installations today. So there's a large range, but what you're hearing are the shiny projects, the ones that are making the news, the ones that are um, in the New York City market. That's where I'm very familiar. Um, and the ones that are willing to, to talk about this backbone and this technology with their buildings. One problem that can happen with some of um, our members is that they might install a, a PoE-based project for lighting, sensors, all of the above, but the client might have a reason to not want to share what technology is running this infrastructure in their building. So sometimes there's even being hampered just by wanting to respect the customer's need for privacy. So you start to talk about it in a generic way. That's one reason why I would say data centers is a huge area, but you might not hear about it. You know, there's data centers out there from, you know, Fortune 100 companies that run their own to colo locations that have implemented PoE for their lighting infrastructure. It makes a ton of sense in the data center space in particular, but for security reasons or, you know, for other reasons, they don't want it, you know, they don't want it to be publicized. So what we're seeing are more and more companies willing to talk about it and show off their innovation spaces or their headquarters, all the shiny new technology, because what they're realizing is if they talk about this thing, this power over ethernet based smart building that they've built, they are actually building up their own brand by showing that they're a thought leader, that they're embracing technology, that they're a forward thinking company. So with that, we're starting to see a lot more conversation around it. That's great. Yeah, there, there is a high tech feel to it, a progressive company having a progressive way to wire their building and plus all the other intrinsic you know, cost savings and quality of installation and other benefits that are part of the POE formula as well, or the POE benefits list. So when you consider, um, you know, the, the availability of intelligent lighting controls and um, luminaires and other LED light fixtures that are available in the ecosystem of this lighting industry that we're in, um, how would you describe the available products that are ready to be plugged into POE applications? And does it give enough for a specifier 
to fill out a fixture schedule from A to Z and have an application that is truly what the design intent from a lighting design standpoint should be? We are a world in a totally different world from five years ago. Five years ago, there might have been some concern about availability. Today, a lighting designer, I would tell them, go for it. Design, use the fixtures you want. I have yet to see a project where PUE couldn't accomplish something in the interior space with PUE as a line voltage uh, versus line voltage. And that goes from emergency lighting, which unless you're in a specific jurisdiction where that pushes boundaries, um, to all the way to decorative entry, you know, lobby chandeliers. You can do it all. LED is really, it's really about the power requirement, even fixtures that might have higher power requirements than what a traditional PoE cable can do today. There are still actually ways of powering and controlling it through the PoE technology backbone. And it's, it's very interesting. Um, most fixtures, either they're going to be, um, because they're low voltage, they can either have the PoE node from a manufacturer be embedded in the fixture. So then it can just come off the assembly line that's a true feel. That's a true plug and play feeling. Um, it could be wired in the field. That's a little less optimal, but it can totally happen. And we're seeing lighting brands when a project comes to them being very receptive. And it's really not anymore. It's not technically hard to take a fixture that's traditionally been line voltage and adapt it to a PUE building. But what we're seeing is a rise of PUE native lighting fixtures coming out. So that's a huge change in the market. And then all of these devices, as long as the power requirement can fit, so under the 90 watt standard that's available today, you can have sensors, um, motorized shades, you could do even, you know, in many instances, ceiling fans and actuators. And there's this whole range of devices that can be connected through your PoE backbone today. And a lot of them aren't coming as native PoE devices but rather you can take something from a manufacturer. Uh, a node is typically what these manufacturers in our group call them. Um, and you can adapt something like a dumb door lock in a commercial setting. You can actually adapt it to be a PoE based one because of um, you know, the flexibility of the products that a lot of our manufacturers offer. So it's really cool. And if it's not PoE native, if it has an API, like a lot of access controls and things, that's how you connect it through software. So it doesn't always have to be PoE. We think that's the best for being a scalable, reliable solution for a commercial building. But you know, it typically these things can all be integrated. Now that makes that makes a lot of sense. In fact, some of that, uh, the fact that it's it is an ecosystem. There's products that are far outside the boundaries of lighting. And I think you're also uh, your your full time role as a as a, a a marketing professional is chief marketing officer of a company that's called MHT, formerly known as MHT Lighting. And I, I imagine it's part of that reason of, of stripping lighting because you do more than just lighting, obviously. So um, so great, great, great answer on that front. And when you consider all the different decision makers that are involved in any construction project, there's a long list from the install side to the specifier side. And now when you consider inserting a POE solution, sometimes you're bringing in another set of stakeholders and that's like the IT people because we're talking about like Cisco network switches and we're talking about cat six cable from Southwire or other companies that do that type of thing. And, and now there's, there's IT people that are not only involved in the decision but they're gonna be required to maybe maintain some of this stuff as the building uh, ages over time. So how does that dynamic affect the overall decision process and project scope uh, when people are considering POE projects? Yes, you've hit on something that is that is a little bit tough. It's a change. And anytime you're changing things, um, you have people who are a bit entrenched and aren't embracing it, or you know those who are, are interested in, in being a lead in this industry. So sometimes IT can be the biggest advocate for this. When that's the case, it tends to be people who see the potential beyond just lighting that they know they're not going to take on facility management. They know they're going to take on the, the value of what the data can bring. They can bring more value and make their department essentially more valuable to the organization. Um, so it's an elevation of their role. But sometimes IT people 
um, can be a detractor. And sometimes I think that's, you know, you have to look at, are they really overworked in what they're doing today? Is it something that they're just, they don't have the time to learn about or spend it on? But really, I think IT leaders can be some of the biggest advocates. They can see beyond um, the just lighting component. They can see the value of what that brings. And they are excited by a vision of a smart building. And what I will also remind people is that we're not saying you're going to have totally, this is new, untested suppliers. You just name some suppliers that have been around for decades. There's people in this industry whose, whose companies are edging into a century of being in business, right? So it's just, it's just changing into utilizing, you know, the cabling provider in a different way or a little bit more, having more Cisco switches or, you know, whatever companies you're using for these things already. But typically your company probably already has established relationships. You're not totally building something from, you know, the, the ground up, which that's exciting. And I think people sometimes forget that that's the case. And I think you touched on something there too, is that your POE might seem new in the scope of lighting, but I mean, it's been over 20 years since the IEEE put out their standards relating to, yes. to power over Ethernet. Granted, they weren't written around lighting, but power over Ethernet has been, been you know, powering up phone systems for, for years. And I think that's one of the analogies people make is that the, 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 the old analog telephony is now voice over IP. It's hard to even find a, a true landline anymore. And my, my sense is that someday lighting will be similar and it may standardize on PoE, but it may not look like the way it does today. And, uh, and all that is very encouraging. But one of the truths of where we are today with respect to PoE is that it hasn't been widely adopted. And when, when, you, when you consider that now and look at the, the market and sure there's some big markets, more sophisticated markets, and maybe some specific verticals like data centers that have considered it, but why isn't it more widespread right now, Kim? Um. That is a question that we are we're working on, and that's a that was a huge driver of developing the PoE consortium. I'm going to be totally honest because even when I was speaking with other competitors um, at trade shows, you know, you know, they're your people. The in, industries in the B2B world are not that big, right? So even if you compete, you're still people. You still talk with each other, and we all came up against really, I would say, four four main hurdles. There were certainly entrenched interests. You know, there are industries that will be less utilized or aren't required in the same way. And instead of embracing this as a potential business opportunity, they might actually be pushing against it because they don't want it. They just don't want it to be successful. They want to stay the way they are. Entrenched interest is a problem. There's certainly some fear. And that goes into my other one around lack of education and understanding. If you don't understand what you're putting in, or if you don't, um, if you think it's entirely new, you just don't really understand the potential, it sounds complicated, you're going to have some fear around that. It's going to be perceived as risky, even though we just talked about the fact that IEEE has recognized this for more than 20 years. There's companies that have been around decades and decades VoIP has proven you can transmit data right over these sort of cables. And I'm and I think that that is something that the PUE consortium has a real opportunity to address. Um, and then certainly there's still been some lingering jurisdictions where regulations sometimes are there where it's hard to interpret what is allowed and what's not. That's why in some instances we've seen whole projects like in the New York City area that have had really it's a PoE backbone in their ceiling, except for emergency lighting. Even though emergency lighting has UL recognized ways of doing it through a PoE backbone. So it, it sometimes it takes companies, you know, to open up their mind. Sometimes there's local interests, but you know, we're certainly seeing a lot of changes. And that's because of some of the benefits that um, PoE can bring to the market and to buildings. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, you mentioned New York City a couple of times now. And my sense is that that's one of the major markets for for adoption of PoE. And at the same time, though, it does have some of those unique challenges with, you know, the exit exit and emergency. I, I think that's the only place in the country where eight inch letters are required instead of six, which doesn't affect the PoE side. But there's a lot of other unique code there, mm -hmm. and a very strong union presence. Local three is really strong in New York still, and um, and the fact that. POE projects might not be utilizing uh, any or as much local three labor 
um, is also an interesting thing as well that you've been able to overcome in a very um, precarious market like New York. But uh, as the song and the saying, and goes, I would just say, it, you know, you make it anywhere. And that's, yeah, a, that's uh, a, certainly a proof case. Absolutely. You just said it. If, if New York City is is taking it on. Um, and certainly there are actually other areas of the country. I give Texas a shout out at, you know, embracing Peewee as well. We're seeing a lot of big stuff coming from there and other areas. But if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere that does apply here. There are some extra unique challenges. There's also some extra forces that are really, I think, going to encourage adoption. Local Law 97, some sustainability initiatives, they're they're going further than at the local level than they than exists at the federal level, and so, so with sustainability, there's things. What are, what yeah. other things are there, Kim, that could help us get to a tipping point where POE is something that everyone kind of knows about and considers as an option, if even if it's not you know seventy percent of the pie chart. How do we get to ten to twenty percent of the pie chart? What's that tipping point that'll give POE uh -huh. more momentum? Oh, I. I think you can't underestimate the value of the sustainability um, elements. I think there's so there's two. I think I would say if I could if I could to give you two, I'd say there's two big forces that will contribute to this tipping point. One is that going into the office, if you want your employees to go back into the office and they live in Manhattan, you know your office is in Manhattan, a major market or or wherever, and you're competing with the home offices that they might have in the suburbs and a 50 minute commute into it, you better have an office that provides additional value, something that you won't get at home. And a digital building, which is really a, the best use case for a PUE infrastructure, you get a digital building if you can connect your devices through this infrastructure. It gives you the flexibility, adaptability to get the building to respond and work for the human occupants inside of it. And then what you've got inherently is a DC infrastructure. Solar energy, wind energy, these energies from the sustainability perspective are native DC power. So if I think you're gonna to start to see a lot more discussion of microgrids, um, solar energy being developed on site, maybe using rooftop, using um, window-based films to collect solar energy locally, and instead of converting it to AC and back to DC, which is what's currently happening, you can keep it all DC on site. You reduce the loss of energy with all those conversions. So even though it might be micro, you're keeping that efficiency there. I think you're really going to see a sustainability drive a tipping point. And then, of course, you know, to to compete in a um, for employees to have a good branding presence to your peers and and whoever may come in your building. You're going to want something that's tech forward, and PUE is the best option for that. Makes sense. Digital building is um, is the wave of the future. It is the future. It is the present, and um, it's the present. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's it's great to hear what you folks are doing uh, to help um, educate and support the mission of advancing uh, PUE adoption. Um, so you know, props to you for as an MH. Uh, I'm sorry, MHT person uh, with yes. all the products that you folks are rolling out to support yeah. the platform, but also um, for what the POE consortium is doing to help um, people get prepared for, um, you know, how, how to specify and utilize all of the great benefits and advantages of POE. So Kim, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Big questions. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Hey there, we really enjoyed that discussion. We hope that you did as well. Be sure to click that big LED logo next to me. And what that'll do is subscribe you to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the next five big questions interview. And YouTube subscribers always receive an early preview to the next interview before we even post it on the Inside Lighting website. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.